Welcome to this Pentecost Sunday service. Let us approach God in prayer. Let us pray. Praise the Lord, my God, how great you are. You meet us on this Pentecost day in words and visions and light and flames and fire. We come before you and you illuminate our need of you and your desire that we should know you. We are transfixed by your greatness and your glory. Praise the Lord, my God, how great thou art. Amen. And so let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we gather together today as those joined by your Holy Spirit. We remember your ancient promise to send your spirit upon all people, young and old, male and female, Jew and Gentile. Move within us, we pray. We come before you remembering that first Pentecost, when your spirit was given to the apostles, renewing their faith and transforming their lives. Move within us, we pray. We come on this Pentecost Sunday, reminded of the constant work of your spirit, inspiring, guiding, challenging, refining. Move within us, we pray. Almighty God, Spirit of Truth, come as you promised and reveal to us more of the way of Christ. Come and fill us with deeper faith and greater love. Give us the gifts we need to work for your kingdom. Inspire us with new vision and purpose and breathe your power into our lives. Move within us, we pray. Almighty and loving God, open our hearts and minds and souls to your spirit, whoever we may be. And so equip us to live as your people, not just this, but every day. Our lives reflecting your glory and proclaiming your love. Move within us, we pray, to the glory of your name. Amen. And a prayer of confession. Living God, this day we rejoice at the gift of your spirit, the way you breathe new hope and new faith and new life 
into your people. But we remember also that not everyone responded so gladly to the Spirit's coming. For some, there was scorn, ridicule and disbelief, suggestions that the apostles were drunk or even out of their minds. Lord, have mercy. Living God, forgive us that we too can be guilty of a similar response. Instead of welcoming the Spirit, we greet her with cautious and suspicious hearts. Instead of opening our lives to the Spirit's movement, we close our minds to anything which challenges our long-held preconceptions. Instead of gladly receiving your Spirit's gifts, we barricade our souls against change. Lord, have mercy. Living God, you warn us to test what we think is the Spirit and to ensure it is of you. And there are times when we need to do that, when it is right to be aware of misplaced enthusiasm and false prophecy. Yet, Lord, save us from ever quenching, obstructing or frustrating the Spirit. Forgive us all the times we have done that and open our lives now to your Holy Spirit's life-giving breath so that we may live more truly as your people. Lord, have mercy in the name of Christ. Amen. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speak about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They were waiting in Jerusalem, as Jesus had instructed them to do. They were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come upon them, 
as Jesus had told them would happen. While they were waiting, they prayed, they took care of practical things such as the replacement of Judas to make the number of disciples back to 12. It wasn't only the 12 disciples waiting, of course. There were all of the women followers who had been with Jesus from the beginning and also other followers so that their number now was 120 people. Jesus had told them just before he ascended into heaven, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. For this, they were waiting together, praying, expectant, available to God. Emboldened a little, perhaps, from the frightened group hiding away in the days after the crucifixion, because now they have all seen Jesus. They have spoken with Jesus and some have eaten with Jesus again. The Jewish festival of Pentecost was one of the festivals that would see pilgrims making their way to Jerusalem to celebrate. And so the city would have been crowded. As the passage tells us, there were Jewish people from all different countries gathered there. People who shared the Jewish faith, but lived in different communities and so spoke different languages. And amongst all of this, this group of believers waited. We often read in scripture of the Holy Spirit coming quietly, like a still small voice, offering leading, encouraging, comforting. I wonder if that was what the group of followers were expecting. If it was, then they were in for a surprise. Because as we heard, the spirit came not quietly, but in the most dramatic way, as a sound like the blowing of a violent wind filling the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. And then all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And such was the chaos and noise of this event that the crowds passing by outside the house were alarmed, bewildered, it says. And so a larger crowd began to gather just to see what was going on. So it is the general commotion that draws the crowd. But what keeps them is that each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? The crowd are drawn and then they stay to listen because they can hear the message in a language that they can understand. Pentecost is the birthday of the church and the beginning of the church's mission to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth, beginning in that day in Jerusalem and continuing to us in our day. And if we read further on from the passage set for today, we find that 3,000 people become followers of Jesus on that first Pentecost day. Why? Because they saw tongues of fire? Well, it doesn't say that they did. Those in the room did, and they knew it to be a sign of the presence of God. Perhaps then it was because they heard the rushing wind. Well, maybe they did, but it doesn't say that. What it does say, however, is that they heard everything that the disciples were saying in their own languages. As we celebrate the birthday of the church some 2,000 years later, our Lord hasn't changed. Our mission 
to spread the good news to the ends of the earth hasn't changed. The power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to fulfill our mission hasn't changed. The need for people to understand the message in their own language hasn't changed. People may be drawn by the spectacular, but they will still only be convinced when they can understand the message. Those of us who are believers are so because somewhere along the line, we heard the good news in a way that we understood. That may have been through words, spoken, written or sung. It may have been by seeing the gospel lived out in someone's life. However it was, it was in a language, in a way that we could understand. I wonder what languages we as a church need to use today. Very possibly not the language that worked for us. The disciples let the Holy Spirit empower them and lead them to speak in a way that was needed in their time on that day in Jerusalem. I wonder, are we open to letting the Spirit empower and lead us to spread the gospel in the languages of those around us in our day? Whether that be physical languages or the languages of the digital age, text emojis or perhaps the languages of art or music ecology or the environment when we read this passage we see that the disciples having been gifted by the holy spirit didn't wait inside the house for those outside to come in so that they could speak to them in aramaic they went out to the crowd and spoke in the languages of the crowd. They didn't dilute the message. It was as radical and all-inclusive as ever. Peter, as we heard, quoted Joel to the crowd, passages that those people would have known from their own scriptures. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above. A message, radical, as it is gender inclusive, age inclusive, status or lack of it inclusive. A message for everyone. An, an undiluted message, but framed for the understanding of the listeners. It can be so hard to wait, can't it? Something I think we're becoming less and less well practised at in our instant society. Especially as we see the churches that we love so much with smaller and smaller congregations and fewer and fewer new faces. We want to act. We want to do something, anything, in order to feel that we're doing something to reverse the decline. The disciples waited and were available when the Spirit came. We do need to make sure that we're not too busy being busy, that we miss the Spirit when she comes. And this time, maybe not in a howling wind with tongues of fire. This time, maybe it will be in a still, small, quiet prompting. I wonder whether the challenge for us this Pentecost is to wait expectantly, believingly, available for the Holy Spirit, and then to allow ourselves to be swept along by the power of the Spirit in us and in the world. To new directions, new ways of communicating to a world that increasingly doesn't understand what we're saying, and then ultimately leading us into new ways of being church. And to not lose hope in the waiting, 
There were only 120 of them on that first Pentecost day, living in a still hostile environment. Yet by the power of the Spirit and the obedience of the disciples, they became 3,000 and 120 on that one day. On birthdays, we celebrate what has passed and we look to the future for what is to come. On the church's birthday, we celebrate that God has brought us this far and we make ourselves available for what God has for us and the church in the future. And we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to all believers and the church, the spirit who will give us the power to be Jesus's witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. And so let us pray. A prayer of intercession. Holy Spirit of peace, we pray for the homes and nations where there is discord and conflict. Pour out your breath of peace that people may listen to each other, may respect one another, may honour each other. Holy Spirit, hear us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit of hope, we pray for those who live in despair, for those who cannot see a purpose in their lives, for those who cannot see a way ahead, for those who feel completely alone. Holy Spirit, hear us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit of unity, we pray for your church, for its ministry to the world. May the Spirit of Pentecost breathe upon us. May we be witnesses to the world, the comfort, meaning and love that you offer. Heal our differences and make us one in you. Holy Spirit, hear us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In the name of our Saviour, we pray. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Oh God of burning. Oh God of burning.
to live a dying world to save. Send the fire today. Oh, see us on your altar lay. We give our lives to you today. So now we offer, now we pray. Send the fire today. Send the fire today. To make our weak hearts strong and brave. Send the fire to live a dying world to save. Send the fire today. Oh, see us on your altar. Day. We give our lives to you. And a prayer. Loving Lord, thank you that you speak to us in a language we understand. With love and grace, forgiveness and hope in our hearts, help us to speak to others with or without words, so that they may hear you speaking through us. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen.